Hello, today on Everyday HDR Free Tutorial Friday, I'm going to go over some Photomatix processing tips and tricks to try and help people with their Photomatix processing. A lot of this has been inspired by um, Eric Valdez's interview that I did with him. I, his HDR style is really true to what he saw, so today I'm going to show a Photomatix tutorial on how to make the images more true to what you see. Um, and what you're seeing in front of you right now, I hope you're thinking, is a very disgusting, nasty HDR image that doesn't hold any value of beauty to you whatsoever, because uh, to me it's it's nasty. Um, but you see this a lot on the web, and this is what gives HDR photography a really bad name. Is uh, you know, If you look here, you see these uh, electric clouds. Um, those can easily be fixed. I'll show you how to fix those. And then you look at the saturation here. The saturation is just ungodly. Um, you know you don't you don't see the image like this and if you're going for an artistic representation because you like the way it looks uh, I hope that when you go and you process this and look back at it uh, 10 years from now you say wow that was a really nasty disgusting image I processed so let's alleviate that and uh, go over how to make this HDR better um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to keep the strength at 100 because I usually do that but I'm going to dock the saturation down to probably about 62 ish um, yeah, there you go. That, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little higher. Luminosity is going to stay at 10.0 because um, I really want to bring out the the uh, light between the shadows and the darks. Micro contrast. I'm going to bring that up to about three. And the reason why you can see here, it starts to bring in some some value to where the shadows were in those areas. So now here's the smoothing. A lot of people put that on minimum, and on minimum you start to get these really blown out edges around tree limbs, um, especially in the skies. I don't ever go below low. I very even rarely step to low. So I'm going to put this one at mid. You can already see that this is starting to look like a real image. And <clears throat> a lot of times you're thinking, well, it's not, it doesn't look that HDR right now. Well, look at your preview. That's what the image looks like to begin with we've got some HDR going on so don't worry about the stuff we're doing right now it'll still be an HDR image and it'll still look like one and people will still like it so at the white point we're gonna go to about 0.49 ish percent and the reason why I'm bringing white point down is did you see what happened with these clouds as you bring the white point down they start to get less electric I'm gonna show you once I'm done showing you how to get this to a good image I'm gonna show you how to take away those uh, little electric clouds that you get when you're doing your processing. Black point's pretty good. Gamma. And we'll keep that right about there. That that looks good. Temperature needs to go up a little bit. We need to get a little bit more warmth in there. There we go. And if if you don't like the fact that that brought out some of the, uh, it took away some of the blue, you can always go in Photoshop and you can add more blue in Photoshop. But temperature helps to get rid of the uh, clouds, electric clouds you see here too. See how uh, the higher the temperature goes, the less electric blue clouds we're getting. And that's pretty much where we want to be. So take that up a little bit more. And like I said before, you can always add more blue in Photoshop later. The saturation in the highlights, I don't want very much saturation in the highlights because I'm not a very big fan of saturation in my HDR images, so I'm going to take that down. I'm going to take it way down. There we go. And my saturation in my shadows, I'm going to take that down too as well. We go to micro smoothing. Micro smoothing I always keep usually at 0, 0.0 because that's what makes the HDR thing happen. Uh, the higher you go up, the less HDR it looks. But like I said, it's still an HDR image. That's our that's our original. It still it still has the HDR effect going on. But I like I like the way that looks with the micro smoothing. Um, I usually keep it down pretty low. Um, I usually don't go higher than two, just because I'm doing an HDR image and I like that HDR effect. Now your 
your smoothing in your highlights is going to help bring out those electric clouds as well. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit and that should get rid of some of that electric color that's going on in the clouds. And the shadows we can keep at set shadow smoothness. That looks good right about there. Let's take the clipping down because I don't like to clip my shadows. So now we have a much better HDR image than what we had before. That's our regular. That's our HDR. And then you saw the bad HDR to begin with. So let's go ahead and save this so I can show you the difference between the two. So let's save this as bad HDR fix. Save it. Yes, I want to replace it. So when I go into my, my presets, I'll show you the bad HDR image, and then I'll show you what we did to make it a, a better HDR image. I have a lot of presets, so it takes a long time for it to load. So here's your bad HDR, but you still see it all over the web. And here's your bad HDR fix. So now I'm going to show you something that happens all the time. So say you, you're pretty good at processing your images, but you still are seeing those electric clouds, the blues that are coming out in those clouds. Let me go ahead and hike this up. I'll hike up the white point. And we'll bring the temperature down. Do you see what we just did? We just created a, a in chemistry uh, and an alchemy algorithm for nasty. Okay, so to fix that, you just do the reverse. But you might be going to one of your presets and your image looks like this. Don't freak out. Don't hesitate. If you like what's going on in your trees, you can always fix those electric clouds. <coughs> bring down your white point. Bring up your temperature. Usually these clouds happen because your white balance was off to begin with. If your white balance is off to begin with when you're shooting and you take four, five raw images that have not had any white balance treatment to them and you bring them into Photomatix, your white balance is going to continue to be off. So as Photomatix does its processing, it's throwing in those blue colors there to as a like an imaginary. I want that to be blue. So bring that temperature up, and then bring your highlight smoothness down. And you're already starting to get those clouds back to the way they should be. Okay, so now let's go to Photoshop. So after you've done your your good HDR image, you can always fix up those levels and those curves, and like I said before, you can always toss in some blue. So if you were upset about the fact that you lost the blue, you sacrifice that blue in order to get the electric out of the clouds, you can always just add more. So in the color balance, just add more blue to your midtones, add more blue to your highlights, and add more blue to your shadows. And you still have your pretty blue sky that you wanted before, but you had to sacrifice it to make your clouds look better. So let's look at how all of these look together. You have your original photo to the left, you have your bad HDR, and you have your good fixed HDR. So I hope that helped. I hope um, if you have any other questions with Photomatix processing, please go ahead and send me questions. I'd be more than happy to help. Have a good weekend, and do some HDR.